My first involvement with the machine was about 14 years ago when it was produced by a company called ECM and I bought a machine for, my, for use at home. Mm -hmm. um, then what happened is I got involved with the company that distributed those machines in New Zealand uh, and we very successfully sold them all around the country doing um, quite good numbers for a country of a very small population mm -hmm. but we've got a very, uh, very strong coffee culture in New Zealand. Um, and then the opportunity came to buy um, the, the design rights for the smaller machines okay. um, from, from the Italian, e ECM, Italian company ECM that was having a little bit of financial trouble at the time. So at that stage there were two of us from New Zealand um, and we combined that with the son of the ECM owner mm -hmm. and um, the three of us started the project. Um, with Daniela and I running the company on a day-to-day -day basis. And okay, and ECM produced these smaller machines and they also produced some larger yeah. commercial grade machines? or Exactly. ECM okay. was a, a, quite a player in the market, mm -hmm. um, producing predominantly commercial machines, but also they developed um, the, small the, single. The, the small things. Okay. Um, since then, they've actually folded completely, and mm -hmm. we've taken a lot, most of their R and D people on to work with us. Oh, okay. The Great. Giotto and Cellini were names we inherited from uh, from ECM when we when we took over. Obviously, okay. we couldn't call our machines ECM because ECM still existed in those days. Mm -hmm. So we changed the name to Rocket, which was incidentally the name the machines were sold under in New Zealand. Oh. Um, the Giotto and the Cellini were the two models. This is the Giotto shape with the flared side as mm -hmm. opposed to the Cellini that has the straight side. Um, and uh, both those body styles and names were inherited too. They had a lot of um, credibility in the market as being very, very good machines. So we didn't want to lose that, that credibility or that history because it's a very important part of our brand. Okay. Very shortly after starting um, commencing business, we did the big host show in Milan, which mm -hmm. runs every second year, which is a major exhibition for espresso machines. Mm -hmm. And looking around that show, I thought we bought a very good product, but it was not much better than a lot of our competitors' products. Um, and so we, we felt we had to lift our game mm -hmm. um, to... To, to elevate the Rocket Espresso brand uh, a little more. So the first machines became the, um, when we took over it was the Rock, it uh, was the, the Plus machine, mm -hmm. and we turned it into the, uh, the, no, it was called the Premium machine, sorry, and we okay. turned it into the Premium Plus machine. Uh -huh. And we changed the quality of the gauges, we changed the handles and the tabs, we just made a few significant changes to make the machine feel better. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then from that, the machines have evolved um, into the Evoluzioni, which we've got here, which has got the rotary pump, mm -hmm. um, and now the new R58, which is our twin boiler machine. The machines are built in a, in a line form, um, and they started with what we call the chassis, the basement, and they're built up from there, mm -hmm. um, with obviously the components coming in as a, as a progression. Mm -hmm. All espresso ma machine manufacturers now have most of their um, bits and pieces built off site by specialist companies. For instance, we don't build the boiler inside oh, the machine. Okay. That, is, that is delivered to us. It's our boiler, it's our design, it's our specification. No one else can use it, mm -hmm. but it's made by a company that is, specializes in producing boilers. Mm -hmm. There's three or four producers of groups in Italy. Okay, um, and in, everybody, that, in that E61 yeah, exactly. design. And everybody okay. draws groups from, from those guys because the cost to tool up and build a group as good as what they're doing mm -hmm. is not our core business. Mm -hmm. So predominantly what happens is the parts come in, and like car manufacturing nowadays, we assemble them. Mm -hmm. Now, there is an incredible handmade component to that um, and the, and the, uh, incredibly time consuming to build mm -hmm. um, and you know if people visit the factory they're always surprised there's no automation um, it's just very much you know men and women with spanners yeah. you know as, assembling the assembling the machine um, the handmade aspect of the machine I think is is a feature of the industry and certainly a feature of rock espresso mm -hmm. um, every machine is you know not exactly the same as the other because it's it's like um, Italian sport, sports cars mm -hmm. um, from 
you know the nineties, the eighties. Um, they're all they've all got their own personality to them, and, <laughs> yeah. and I think that's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't. We'd never like to make a machine that is stamped out of a plastic mould yeah. because it's not not what we believe is, espresso is all about. We want to keep Rocket as a, as a niche produ producer, um, mm -hmm. making limited numbers of machines. Um, we don't we don't aspire to to you know becoming so big that we've got to move production to Asia because mm -hmm. that doesn't fit with what we're doing. Um, we we're trying to we've tried to create a premium product. Um, you know, for instance, the, the centres of the machines are brass and then chromed as a testament to our build quality, to our philosophies. We mm -hmm. could put plastic in there and no one would even know. Um, so. For Rocket, as a, as a brand, we want to concentrate on the strength of our brand. We want to concentrate on the strength of our product, mm -hmm. um, and we want our designs and our technology and um, to deliver machines that that make really good, really good espresso mm -hmm. um, first and foremost. But also, have got a little bit of a sex appeal to them. And yeah. just not so just a stainless steel box. You know, there's there's something the Rocket branding needs mm -hmm. to come through very strongly. Um, for instance, with the R58, we've got the big R on the on the steam tap, yeah. which would cause a lot of controversy when we first brought it out. Some people just hate <laughs> it, but now, now people love it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we're all about, I think, as a brand. Hopefully, for most people, Rocket, Rocket Espresso is not just an espresso machine. Mm -hmm. It's a brand. Yeah. And, and that's important to us. We, you know, the... We want the, the whole customer experience when you take home the box with your machine in, it's all branded up, it looks, it looks great, and that's, w that's where the experience should start. Mm -hmm. um, and likewise with the accessories, it's all part of the, the family. And, mm -hmm. and trying to create something that, um, that, people, that people like and enjoy right from, right from the, the beginning of the, the whole process. Mm -hmm. When they buy the machine, they take it home, and it's beautifully packaged. Um, it, that sort of thing means a lot to me.